In this video, we're going to talk about configuring our Palo Alto specifically for VLANs, trunking and sub interfaces, what the differences are and how we can make that work together with everything else. So let's go ahead and let's look at our network environment. Uh, right now we have a uh, pretty much a pretty basic environment. If we look at this, we've got four interfaces. We've got, uh, let's see, this is ethernet zero slash one. This is ethernet one slash one, ethernet one slash two, and ethernet one slash three. So in total, we have four interfaces. Really only three are usable simply because this management VLAN, you normally don't want production traffic occurring across your management VLAN. And so we've got three interfaces. Uh, honestly, for the ones we want to work with, it's only two because we don't really want to put anything else on the public network. Uh, so we've only got really our private and our DMZ interfaces in order to configure things with. But what if I need more than just two interfaces? Uh, I mean, we just right here, we have our desktops network and we have a DMZ network. What if we wanted to start breaking this out such as uh, by department? So say we have accounting and we have HR and we have sales and we have IT and we have the executives and you know whatever other departments we might have. Suddenly we start uh, ballooning the number of ports that we need on our Palo Alto device. So right here, we've gone ahead and we've said, well, we need five more networks in our environment, but we only had two ports to begin with. Uh, so we can go out and we could buy a brand new uh, Palo Alto that has seven ports and hope that we never need an eighth. Or we can use something called a virtual LAN. Now, a virtual LAN is a virtual uh, local area network. And basically what it does is it allows us to take this one physical Ethernet one slash one and break it up into a whole bunch of smaller networks, every single one, which acts exactly as if it's a physical network. And then we could assign those to the accounting department, to the HR department and the sales, IT, executive, shipping, uh, facilities, uh, education, you know, front desk, back office, all the different departments you could possibly think of in your environment. Wow. All right. So how does this work? If you've talked with VLANs in the past before, then this is a piece of cake for you and you're, you're probably going to be really bored and pointing out a whole bunch of errors that I'm going to say here, but this is the general idea. How this works is if we have a physical switch right here. So let's say this is a Cisco 2960. Uh, what I can do is I can go ahead and I can say, you know what, these ports right here, I want those to act as VLAN number one. And those come on up here to this virtual network and then I can hang computers off of it. So I've got some servers, I've got some desktops. Um, I can go ahead and just connect PCs and servers and other network devices right to that. From their point of view, it is a network. They aren't connected to anything special. They're just connected to a network. Uh, it's not until things get back to the switch that it actually matters. Do the same thing here for VLAN 2. I go ahead and assign those over and VLAN 3, assign those to there. Now, where the magic really comes is when we want to talk from one device to another. Say we have this VLAN right here, VLAN number one here and VLAN number one over here. We want these guys to be able to talk to each other, but I don't want to have to run a separate cable just for VLAN one to talk to VLAN one and VLAN two to talk to VLAN two. I, since maybe they're in different buildings, I want them to use the same cable to communicate amongst all of them. And this is where the magic of VLANs come in because of what's called trunking. Oops. Let's try that again. Because of what's called trunking. Yes. So what happens with trunking is the VLANs are able to essentially tag themselves. Think of when you put something in the mail. Uh, I know the mail's not really used that whole lot. Uh, what you can do is you go ahead and you write somebody's address on that and then you 
you essentially tag who it's supposed to go to and you put it in the mailbox and the mail delivery system goes ahead and takes it to its destination and eventually ends up in the right place. And that's what the tag does. It's one central place that handles everything. So data comes from VLAN number one with the machines on that network think everything is perfectly normal. They know nothing about VLANs or trunking or tags. They just know that they're connected up to a physical port that then comes down across the trunk gets tagged. Sorry, goes across the trunk to its destination where it is untagged and delivered to the end clients. Choose green. Okay. What happens then is VLAN number two comes along and it goes to the switch and it gets tagged. Its data gets tagged and then goes to the second switch, gets untagged and eventually goes to VLAN number two. And then same thing for VLAN number three. Let's try blue. There you go. VLAN number three goes up to the switch, gets tagged back to the other switch, untagged, and then finally to its destination for the other VLAN number three. So all of these VLANs, and you can go all the way up to 4,096 VLANs, all of those get trunked through the same connection. Awesome. So I only have to actually pay to have one cable between these two switches. Maybe these are on two different, uh, two different buildings, two different cities, two different continents. I can still have VLAN one talk directly to VLAN one isolated in every single way from all the other VLANs. And I only have to pay for one cable between the two locations. So if you're curious on how this works, and I'm always curious on how these things work, uh, this very first diagram we have right here, this is an ethernet frame. Ethernet frame. Uh, you may or may not have seen this before, but you've got the preamble. You've got your destination and your source max. Uh, Mac addresses. You then have your ether type, which is normally, let's see, 0800. You have your payload, which is actually your data. So what information are you sending from one point to another? You then have your CRC slash FCS frame check sequence, uh, which actually confirms whether the data has been received properly or not. And then lastly, some gap to make sure that things don't overwrite each other. That is the standard Ethernet frame. What happens for for VLANs to come in is they've sliced in right before the ether type. They've gone ahead and sliced in this 802.1Q header. And the 802.1Q header is four bytes in size. Four bytes allows up from zero to 4096. Actually only 4094 usable but up to 4096 and it allows us to just tag. This is where the tag is handled. On non-trunked frames, I see this for non-trunked. So if I go back to the prior slide, these guys right here are non-trunked. The trunk, however, sees these down here with the 802.1Q header. So it actually, the, the tags are in the trunks, but not for everybody else. And that's how it's able to separate the data for the different interfaces. So an example here, let's say I very briefly, let's say I go ahead and I decide, you know what, these ports right here, this is all accounting. Let's just call this VLAN 10. This next chunk right here, let's call this HR or VLAN 20. Uh, next chunk, uh, sales, VLAN 30, and then ooh, IT. Can never forget IT. The VLAN 40. So in this case, I have four different networks, four different environments that I need to be able to support. I'm looking at my Palo Alto over here and I can see, well, I've got like 20 ports. 
So sure, I could support four different environments. That's not a problem. Uh, however, the problem comes in when I need more than just four different ports or four different environments. Instead of dedicating you know, this one to accounting and this one to HR and this one to sales and this port to IT, instead of dealing with that and tagging each one to its own physical interface, what I can do is I can run all of these guys through one trunk line and I could just take up one physical port and run that as a trunk right there. And that means instead of having to have a physical environment, a uh, physical port for each of my VLANs of which I may have instead of just 20, I could very easily have hundreds or thousands of, I can simply run them all through one trunk line or one sub interface on my device and manage everything up almost exactly the same as before. So a little bit of information about sub interfaces on Palo Altos, they are managed and configured exactly the same as, as physical interfaces. Once they're created, they are exactly the same. They, they are viewed exactly the same and managed exactly the same. Uh, they can have the exact same security policies, the exact same NAP and zones and virtual routers all applied to them the same way as with a physical environment. So let's take an example. Uh, we'll draw this out and then we'll actually do it. So here I have my Palo Alto environment. I know that this port right here is Ethernet. Ooh, excuse my really bad handwriting. Uh, Ethernet one slash one. And that's currently hooked up to my private VLAN. Let's say one day at the office, everybody's working away on their computers uh, and then some consultant comes in. And the consultant says, oh, I need access to the internet. How do I get access? Well, we don't necessarily want a consultant to have access to our private network because it's private. Uh, if everybody had access to it, then we might as well just call it public. So what we want to do is we actually want to, off of Ethernet 1.1, we want to create a guest network. <clears throat> Uh, this guest network we want to use, uh, let's just go ahead and let's say that this is VLAN 42. We want to call this just 42 because 42 is a nice number. Yeah. Uh, since it's VLAN 42, in order to make life simple, uh, we will go ahead and follow the same numbering scheme here, except we will call it 10.1.42.0 slash 24. Uh, for the Palo Alto, we'll actually apply dot one for the router interface. Uh, yeah. So that's the goal. What we're going to do is we're going to create a sub interface and we will call this Ethernet one slash one dot 42. So that's the plan. Let's go ahead and see how that works. So we've got our Palo Alto device here. Uh, everything's up and running currently. It's just basic configuration of all of the interfaces. In order to create a sub interface, I'm gonna come up here to network. And in network, I'm going to choose my interfaces. So what I, what I do, or what I want to do is off of Ethernet 1.1, I want to create a sub interface. You'll, you may notice this little button down here at the bottom, it says add sub interface, but it's grayed out. The reason why it's grayed out is because we don't know which primary interface we want to start with. So what we do is we click on Ethernet 1.1, we highlight it. And you'll notice the add sub interface button is now available. That means we're creating a sub interface off of Ethernet 1.1. So click add sub interface. We start off interface name. We can't change this because that's Ethernet 1.1. We can, however, put a dot and then a number. This number can be anything. I can choose the number one. I can choose the number 50. I could choose the number 42. It doesn't matter. I'm going to stay with 42 because the very next item down here is tag. This is the VLAN tag. My VLAN tag is going to be 42. This does not have to match the same as this. They could be different. 
However, if I'm managing VLAN 42, it's kind of nice to know I'm managing sub interface 42. Ah. At this point, everything down here with config IPv4, that should all look exactly or very familiar and exactly the same as when you configured a regular interface. Virtual router. Well, let's go ahead and choose our virtual router. Security zone. Oh, we don't have a guest security zone. Well, I can go ahead and I can just click right here, new zone. And that will bring up the, the zone wizard. Let's go ahead and just type in guest. Uh, don't worry about the interfaces, but it will add that in. One thing you may notice, the type is stuck at layer three. Uh, because this is a layer three interface that I'm creating a sub interface on, it has to be a layer three zone. So, okay, it puts in a security zone as guest. IP address. Let's see, I believe I said that I wanted, let's see, I could create a new IP address. In this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and add in 10.1.42.1 slash 24. And say, okay. At this point, my sub interface is created. You can see it is kind of tilted in underneath the ethernet 1.1. It shows my sub interface of number 42. I have my IP address applied to it and my tag, my VLAN tag of number 42 and its security zone. At this point, everything else I may do with my zones, such as applying security policies or NATing or other conditional based forwarding, these are all managed exactly the same as they would before because all of these guys where all of our policies are applied are all based off of zones. So it doesn't matter whether it's a physical interface or a virtual interface, it is simply a zone at this point. <laughs>